Hello and welcome back to Second Take Movies, a podcast where we give movies a second look, second chance, second take, if you will. I am your host, Preston Jenkinson, and joining me to that's not face off. I have the wrong script in here. Bob, no, Mission Impossible Two. <laughs> Leave it. Face off. Face <laughs> off again. We're going to talk more. Mission We're talking Impossible about two. Mission Impossible Two today with Jake Twido again. Mission Impossible Two: The Turd. We 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 had so much fun with Face Off. We decided to do another John Woo movie. But uh, yeah, but you know what happened? We watched a John Woo movie about diseases and stuff, and we got sick after yeah, watching it. Yeah, and I blame this. This was why we got sick. This episode is a week late because we were both extremely sick last week. Um, and to be clear, we're two hours apart. Yeah, like, we don't interact. But we were both sick. Sounds like yeah. the same thing. It's Chimera. That's yeah, all. I think it was, you know, and a lot of people at my church were sick as well. So I think it was like allergies or something like that. But. Mm, no, Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible itis. <laughs> the story for Mission Impossible 2 IMF agent Ethan Hunt is sent to Sydney to find and destroy a genetically modified disease called Chimera, which we just mentioned. And Jake is reaching for more booze. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I looked over and went, there's a cord wrapped over here that I'm going to yank, and this <laughs> thing is going. Um, God, I'm already I'm already at problems with the summary yeah. of this. Just, I, you know what? You got a positive and negative review? That's right. All right, I'll hold off. The first one by Sean Levy of the Portland Oregonian. Oregonian? Oh. Oregonian? All right. I don't know if it's the same Sean Levy that did Free Guy, but who knows? Moves with terrific energy, alternating, riveting action sequences with intimate material in a manner that's pure woo. It is not Sean Levy. I've met him. That's okay. the guy from Stranger Things. But right. I this Sean Levy, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. you're wrong. Yeah, no, it is John Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Is so. another John Woo movie. Charlotte from the Charlotte Observer, Lawrence <laughs> Topman, Topman. Getting local, baby. Yeah. S- said, mostly you can get a pain in the head from the assault on your senses and deja vu as thick as heartburn from an anchovy pizza. I, you know, I think that review stands for us. Mm-hmm. You know, 20 years after this came out. Yeah. Yeah, at the time, eh, I, I mean, I remember seeing this in theaters, Ooh. and I was confused, but I was still amped. You know, it was mm-hmm. like, yeah, dude, Mission Impossible, that's the best thing ever. But Did you watch it on Amazon Prime like I did? Yes, I did. Was your version really red? Yes, and I, th- I actually think the film is like that. Well, I had to turn off my HDR, my HDR on my I TV. Yeah, it was awful. And that took care of it because it was like extremely like washed out with red. So I either remember it wrong or when they upscaled it and did whatever else, they did a bad job, mm-hmm. which it yeah. didn't matter. I and mean, this yeah. thing was not worth spending time on. No. Uh, it, it's I ha- always a bad, I feel like it's always a bad podcast for you when in the first 10 minutes, I'm immediately going, yeah, this thing doesn't deserve crap. <laughs> <laughs> This movie definitely deserved Limp Biscuit because that's who remixed the oh. the uh, original Mission Impossible song. Oh, with the ball, the bang, the bang, possible. Mm. I yeah, I forgot Limp Biscuit was involved, and I hit mm. up, I paused it, and then you know Amazon Prime gives you greatest feature ever. Whoever the yeah. actor is, it, you know, and I saw Limp Biscuit, and I went, oh, that's right. And then I remembered it's Hans Zimmer, and said. Oh, it's this Hans Zimmer. It's yeah. the weird guitar Hans Zimmer, which the soundtrack to this sucks. Yeah. It's pretty rad, though, but it sucks. Yeah. But, ah. Hmm. I mean, it was the year 2000, so this was like right after The Matrix. So it was, Yeah. I mean, this was like 100. <laughs> listening now, you understand. Yeah, it sucked. But back then, pretty sure I went, this sounds like everything else. I love it. I mean, yeah. right. So, I mean, we all listen to Limp Biscuit. Like, there, there's a reason you know the name Limp Biscuit is because we all listened to it in middle school. Oh yeah, I yeah. If you didn't, you pretended like you did because right. somebody else popular did. So, 
you know, the, 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 the chocolate starfish and hot dog flavored water. Come on, people. <laughs> oh. but, but you know what? Right away, I, I don't know. The opening scene, I went, I don't remember some of this. Yeah, I didn't either. This is a Mission good. Impossible movie. It's then it the Lord Biscuit part came in, and it's like something's wrong with this movie. Yeah, it starts with the uh, Russian guy you've seen in everything. I mean, you you know who I'm talking about. I don't know his yeah. name, but he plays a Russian guy in every movie. Yeah, well, I mean, his name is Doctor Vladimir in this. Yeah, and dead giveaway. And it starts with him getting intercepted by Tom Cruise or who we, or Ethan Hunt, who we think is actually Ethan Hunt, but oh no. It's do gray Scott How in a mask. Something that man. How that was so dope. And you know, like, yeah. I forgot about that whole face thing, but that's such a cool concept of these movies. But it's so funny. Like what you were amazed at is used against you from the first one right away. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, man, I, I, I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened, but I watched that opening scene and I went, this movie's awesome, actually. <laughs> you know, five minutes later, I went, screw this movie. Yeah. But, oh, man, that was so cool. Just incredible. Incredible. Um, but, you know, the concept of the movie, I flawed. Yeah. Because the, the doctor has injected himself with Chimera for some reason, and it's like you got 20 hours to live after that. And his goals to get from... Where do they fly out from? I can't. I can't even remember. Uh, He's getting to Atlanta. Know. I mean, for He's some reason, to to Atlanta. But yeah, for some reason, this whole movie takes place in Australia. Um, it must have been cheap to film there because they. Yeah, the it was saying of showing Australia. Uh, I did the math. There's no way possible that guy would have lived. You can't do that flight in that right. time. Yeah, he would have like, killed everybody on that plane, especially in the 2000s. Like yeah. now, maybe it's close, but back then, heck no. Well, now man. this is, you know, this was right before um, 9-11, so you could have gone through security pretty quick, you know? Preston, I'm sorry. This podcast just went downhill. I didn't know you were going to be. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's terrible. <laughs> but no, that, you know, that's a good point. I didn't think yeah. about, I didn't think about that. Yeah, you could have been in and out I mean, we, pretty quick. We, and we, thankfully, I mean, like, they don't do Man, you're gonna get flagged on so much stuff if you leave this in. Uh, they're not gonna do body scans for disease, right? So the yeah. daughter would have been fine. Yeah, but I, all I gotta say is Tom Cruise is a great actor. He, I is. think Tom Cruise is phenomenal. When a, that was Tom Cruise, right? You could even tell it wasn't Tom Cruise. It's like that's not how Ethan Hunt would react or. So I love that. Preston that you said that just now. I think you and I have a better understanding of how Ethan Hunt would act yeah. than John Woo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think John Woo <laughs> said, "Oh, this is a spy movie." Well, yeah. there's not a lot of movies from this. James Bond has a ton. We'll just copy James Bond. Well, I see. I think the problem with this is Tom Cruise was probably like saw some John Woo movies. Because he's a producer yeah. on on this franchise, yep. And he was like, "Oh, I gotta, we gotta do that," without thinking about contact. Hey, all this kicking and floating through the air, and that's not gonna work in a spy movie. No, I mean, like, in I don't know, Ethan Hunt. I have not watched all the TV show stuff. Yeah, I don't I know either. all the lore, I and mean, I know some of it. I do enjoy. I really am a Mission Impossible fan. Minus the second and third iteration. But, you know... The third movie's great. The movie after this one is awesome. Okay. So that's what I couldn't remember. Like, was it good? I know it's J.J. Abrams' first movie. Yeah. First big movie. Yeah. So I'm... I'm I need to watch that. But the... Uh, I need to watch it again. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the bad guy. Oh, Jeez. God. Yes, that one's... Yes. Never mind. <laughs> Back it up. I remember more. <laughs> Don't edit this out. I'm a fool. I was wrong. But anyway, um, Do Gray Scott, who turned down X Men to be in this movie, he was going to be Wolverine, which thank God he was not Wolverine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it's it turns out it's Do Gray Scott and his crew, and somehow they crashed a plane. I don't really remember. It's been a week not since cool, I've seen this movie. Not as cool as uh, <laughs> Batman. You know, no, no, they missed that. Set, you know, cool sequence, cool idea. Now it's overshadowed. Yeah. 
Um, um, but he, whatever, uh, Dugree Scott, his main bro. No, no, there's another guy. All right, never mind. Never mind. There's another guy that's like in every movie too. Yeah, I know who you're like, talking about. Yeah. Oh shoot, no, he's definitely evil. This is definitely bad. And I the, forgot. Um, the glass gal smiled guys back in this movie too. Yep. So yep. he must work with John Woo a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, the guy from uh, yeah, he's in Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, the that and everything guy. else. Yeah, yeah. D- d- are those legit? Like, yeah, yeah, he got those as a kid. Okay. Like someone did it to him. Yeah. Yeah, that dude's rad. Yeah. I, <laughs> when I saw, there's a lot of people in this movie that mm. I went, oh man, I love that guy. Mm. I love him in this, this, this. I forgot. I don't know. It's a starting place for a lot of people, but. But basically, yeah. they they kill the scientists and take the the the. I guess they take the chimera with them. I'm not really sure. They take um, the uh, antivirus. That's what it is. Yeah, the chimera is in the scientists. They don't realize it, so they yeah. just have the cure. They don't have the disease. So we cut to t- Tom Cruise, who's on vacation, <laughs> in- <laughs> uh, just climbing up a butte in somewhere. Climbing up a rock Dude, somewhere. I remember watching this in the theaters, and I was like, "This is so cool! This guy's doing this, man!" And he, Tom Cruise, he really was doing it. Like he, he did that, like that jump where he goes from. Yeah, that's Tom Cruise. Like, I laughed my head off making fun of it, but also was going, "Whoa, yeah!" Like that's so impressive. Like it's it's I corny know- and and very two thousands and extreme yeah. or whatever, but it's like. He did it. I didn't realize Tom Cruise was doing his own stuff that hard. Yeah. Already. I mean, like the Tom Cruise that rides off an airplane mm-hmm. in the air. You know, yeah, he's secured, but dag gum. He did a lot of the driving in Days of Thunder. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, again, uh, whatever negative things I got to say about this movie, Tom Cruise, he's crazy. His commitment to Tom the Cruise. stunt is unmatched. Yeah. But, he, he goes all out other no than matter like what. Jackie Chan or somebody like that. Whoa, baby. You slow your old. Don't even bring the Chan into this because he is a uh jewel. I think they're on the same level in terms of doing do their own stunts. Like Yeah. I, Jackie Chan. That's another that's another you know, we'll do a Jackie Chan yeah, movie. We'll we'll find a Jackie Chan movie to do. But, but it'll be a like you watch it for the first time and go, that's the best thing I've ever seen. The IMF show up um, in a helicopter with, and they just, just a rocket launcher out the thing. I'd be like, well, somebody's trying to kill me. <laughs> Dude, Google Glass right away. In the 2000s, these yeah. trash cats created VR. With the with the Limp biscuit version of the the, the Mission Impossible. It hurt my soul. But, but I mean, Fred Durst is a nice guy, though. Like he did a Reddit AMA, and everybody's yeah, like, what, decent. "What's it like to be hated by everybody?" He's like, "No, I mean, pretty cool, man. I made a yeah, lot of money. I made a lot of money in the early two thousands. I don't know what to tell you." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, geez, Preston. I mean, like, the, I don't know. There's this. It's funny thinking about the modern Mission Impossible movies. Yeah, if something like that happened in the modern ones, someone shoots an RPG at you. It would not be the same thing. Yeah. You don't know who they are. Yeah. I, you know, but you know, it's, it, it's hard to compare now versus the two thousands, but he, he gets a pair of Oakley's, which give him his, uh, his new mission, whether he chooses to accept it or not. Sorry for burping into the microphone. Preston. I love that burp. <laughs> and I remember for Christmas wanting those Oakley's. Oh, everybody wanted the speed dealers, man. But you know what? Never got them, and I hate Oakleys. Where I because we I I think we both grew up in the small town South. Oh yeah, like everybody I knew wore like Costa Del Rey's and and Oakleys and stuff. And dude, I it's, okay. We oh you know connected to this. So my brother, uh, older brother, moved mm-hmm. to Phoenix for an internship at some point, and he got a job at a hotel mm-hmm. of being the uh, bellhop slash um why am i blanking on this um concierge but a park in people's cars when they pull them up valet valet thank you so he'd valet cars and then he'd also kind of do some in-between stuff uh 
could be incredibly false. Sorry, Drew, if you ever listen to this. <laughs> I'm not calling him a liar, but apparently Tom Cruise stayed at the resort that he worked at. Whoa. And it was a huge, I mean, like, very possible. It's the biggest golf course resort in yeah. Phoenix. So uh, Tom Cruise left his sunglasses. There were some Ray-Bans. Mm. And I used to have them. Uh, he Drew was like, I hate these sunglasses. They look stupid on my head and gave them to me. So we're talking about, you know, Oakley's and stuff. All I got to say is, is Tom Cruise is a Ray-Ban man. And apparently I had a pair of his. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but <laughs> I'll believe it until I die just to be happy. Yeah. Um, but those things are sick. Hey, that, that little Oakley sequence. Well, yeah. Oakley paid a lot of money for that. And they never were brought up again. Nope. Nope. He gets his nope. little mission and then he throws them at the camera and they explode. And again, with the, 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 the theme song plays again. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I was really happy. And I know I'm skipping the gun. Uh, and I am embarrassed. The guy that actually did the recording for it was a famous actor who was in Silence of the Lambs. What is his daggum name? Anthony Hopkins. Thank you. Oh, man, I'm embarrassed. How did Don't they take... get Anthony Hopkins to do this? That was my note. I had a note and said, how in the world? Because at this point, this guy's established. Yeah. You know, but this this movie's kind of bullcrappish. Like, another piece of that? trivia. Our good friend Ian McKellen, again, who's been brought up several times on this podcast, was supposed to do that. But he got caught up with X Men. <laughs> That's crazy. There's two X Men casualties on yeah. this. It was either Lord of the Rings or X Men that kept him from doing like this five day roll. The good choices. Yeah, I mean, you know, Anthony Hopkins doesn't care. Like, he, I mean, he's even said like being an actor is bullshit. Like, I mean, I get to play make believe for a living. Yeah, why? I mean, man, it, it's wild to know. And I, you know, I'm trying to not to harp it. This movie was a success. It yeah. made so much money. It was yeah. good, but uh, so I'm sorry. I really derailed you. The uh, IMF shows up. They escape, but then Tom Cruise gets the intercept and like goes somewhere. And does Tom Cruise just decide, like, I'm going right now to meet with Anthony Hopkins? I guess. I don't know. I mean. I think that's right. Yeah. And then, just... look, I'm, I'll be dead honest and listen. It's been a week since you and I have watched this. Yeah. And we were <laughs> sick from watching this bull I was I was starting to get sick when I watched this movie. So, I'm not going to no, remember everything. No, you know what? No, he gets, yeah. He goes straight to Spain. Um, yes. Seville, Seville, Spain. They no, go. he meets with Anthony Hopkins before he meets the woman. Yeah, go, but goes there. I think they're in Spain then too. Oh, he's already in Spain. Okay. Yeah, and he's like, you, the, your job is you got to recruit this person to help you. You can make a right. team of three, but she's part of it because she's for a thief. Some reason we need this civilian thief who ha I guess just because she happens to have a previous relationship with Dugri Scott. And, and this is where I was like, all right, I'm tuning out of this. Mission Impossible's not. James Bond. It's not a womanizer. It's like cool gadgets, weird, yeah. you know. I mean, yeah, because there's not typically, I mean, there is, there are women who, but it's. Help. Yeah, but like the modern stuff, he's but married. He's not like, Ethan Hunt is not like a typical James Bond womanizer. Nah, kind of nah, he's more of a like. Because he, he's like, he has a, he's married to Michelle Monaghan for most of the series. Yeah. But uh, later on, meets with Anthony Hopkins, gets the full spill, which also is kind of weird. You know, what? like you Why had this that, like, weird. E either, you know, Anthony Hopkins or Ian McKellen, both of those people are expensive. Why? And, and it doesn't help the story. He got his no. mission and some glasses. Why do you need this why? guy to talk to him? Basically to explain why they need this civilian thief, basically, who's not an agent. But yeah, but not going to tell you the full truth of it. Like, right. And basically, I, yeah. his his reasoning is, oh, she's a woman. She's good at lying. I'm like, okay. And then you get the slow mo. Then you yeah. get all the John Woo slow mo. Look at these dancers. Look at yeah. like, look. I'm all about seeing some attractive 
women. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But of course. It's like, man, this is stupid. Silly. <laughs> yeah. And, and maybe, you know, again, at the time, it was rad. I was mm. 10, though. So a lot of stuff was rad. But they do the whole. And, I, you know, I did die laughing at the uh, entry scene or like him talking to her she's gonna steal something from someone yeah and he pretends to be the security person apparently he's got a little remote that sets off the yeah alarm. that was solid i i did laugh i went that's clever all right and cool. um i don't know the, the her character's name but it's played by thandy newton is our thief yeah and who is excellent in westworld i was about to say like the only thing i can think of is westworld the scene mm-hmm. her again was like whoa no you're bad. Like the entire time I'm watching Westworld when it first premieres, like I know this woman from somewhere. What has she been in? And it turns out it was Mission Impossible too. Until you just said that, I didn't mm. make the Westworld connection. If I'm honest, yeah. I looked it up. I looked her up. Didn't see that, which would have been the first thing I saw. But yeah, Co- that, continuity it, it, well, for this franchise was not an issue until the fourth movie. Like definitely not. They were just like, was just a Mission Impossible movie. I mean, and yeah, Ethan which is Hunt where I'm like, the, they started treating like Bond movies. It was basically not modern, not modern the, Bond. The the two mainstays are um, Tom Cruise and Ving Rhames. Is basically. that Luther? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know his name. Yeah. What? Hey, which that dude? Ten out of ten. Mm-hmm. Anytime I see him, I'm like, I oh, love him. Love him. He just loves Ethan Hunt so much too. Yeah. Especially in the sixth movie, he's like. You know, Ethan is such the greatest guy on the planet and blah, 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 blah. Don't you do it, Ethan. Not for me. Little did you know, um, Tom Cruise has a gun pointed at that guy's testicles all day. Dude, the dumbest thing. Is, well, okay, not the dumbest. One of them. That chase scene. So Ethan tries to recruit. Oh, yeah, where they're fight. having a conversation over like loud revving engines. <sighs> this, There's no way. There's no there's, way. Like, I can believe the impossible and crap. No. Not in this. No, 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 no. This is when I fully went, oh, yeah, this movie really sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of this is good. All this is bad. Yeah, but they do that entire chase sequence, which, like, it was cool to watch, but he runs her <laughs> off the road. He runs her off the road, like, oh, on the edge of a cliff. Saves her, and then it's like, oh, we're going to do it. I just saved your life. We're going to yeah. do it. And like all, and then right after that, they're just like in love through the whole movie after that. The best thing of my life is knowing after this movie, she doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Like they're in love. Cause Which, he's married and, and in the next one. Yeah. A lot of my bond problems is like, he falls in love with this girl. Bond never falls. She's gone. Love. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True player for real. Yeah. Um, um yeah, so he gets he recruits Luther and Billy Bard and an Australian Sydney bar. guy. Which you know what that make that I went okay. You're in Australia for this stuff. You got an Australian pilot, makes perfect sense. Yep. But then you get the legit spill of oh okay they want Naya Naya. Yeah, that's her name. I always want to say Nia just mm-hmm. instinctively naya's former love so they has to like talk him into loving or pretending to love sean mm-hmm. ambrose again i'm glad Man. you know the character's name because i didn't uh, well you know you knew the actor's name so yeah. i'm more proud <laughs> i just yeah i think that mission impossible has a weird uh algorithm of character names they pick a common name and then yeah. the last name's a color I don't even remember Henry Cavill's character's name. Um, Mustache McKinnigan's. Yeah, there you go. The Superman killer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she gets reacquainted with Do Gray Scott, and they they makes him think that they're back together again, and then we're at a horse, horse race. Racing. Yeah. Which you know what, man? Like that was a cool scene. It was. It was ridiculous. That's cool. Like. Yeah, she's apparently winning this guy money. We're going to send you someone to tell you to come talk somewhere else, put an earpiece in. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What a stupid idiot. Every camera. Left left jacket pocket. You put it in the right, you klutz. 
every camera in this movie, like he gives her a camera at some point for some reason, and it's like this huge brick of a thing. Preston, I used cameras like that then. Yeah, they don't like, work like that. I know it was, it was the early 2000s. Digital cameras were just a thing. We were all excited. Oh but in the first movie, they're putting tiny little lenses on cameras that uh, on glasses, and it's like full HD. Uh, that's my problem. The first movie was so much forward in technology, and now yeah. they're trying to be realistic. Now, now they're trying but, to sell stuff. Yeah, I, and thank you. Yeah, you know what? I forgot that. That's my problem with this movie. This is all one commercial sale. The first yeah. Mission Impossible, that's still one of my favorite movies ever. Mm -hmm. Red, green, slap it. You know, bubblegum, crap, whatever. God, that's going to be a terrible thing to hear for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> but like going from the first one, that was so, God, man, beautiful mm -hmm. to this. And legitimately, I really think this is nothing but an ad. Yeah. For a lot of different things. John Woo is part of the ad. Like, look yeah. what I can make. And Tom Cruise. Sydney, too, Australia. But, yeah. Yeah. they And I think they paid for a decent amount of the funding for this, too. They probably did. Which, I mean, like, nowadays, that's normal. But back then, that didn't happen. You know, you always see the, like, mm -hmm. thank you for the Atlanta, or Georgia, excuse me, state yeah. or Canada. But back then, that didn't happen. But, I mean, you get all those people together. You get the awesome, like, camera footage stuff, which stupid and insane. But that's yeah. when everything goes awry. I couldn't figure out why would you watch, like, why wouldn't you have something to copy the memory card? Exactly. And not watch it right then. Yeah. Uh, but then they get the, they, they, that's when they figure out the, like, it's a 20 hour virus. You mm -hmm. have 20 hours until you die, which sets out the rest of everything else. But, um, there's pretty too wild. many masks. There's too many masks in this movie. Yes. Yes, there are. Cause you never know anything. Because um, Dugray Gray Scott dresses up as Tom Cruise again after Thandy Newton comes out of the house one night. And we don't realize until. Tom Cruise, we realized Tom Cruise is doing something else. I can't remember. It cuts to that. And then I will say Brandon Gleason pops up as uh, the God's the CEO of Bio City, BioSite, BioSite. Who's, who's Brandon Gleason? Uh, Brandon Gleason is the guy, if you've ever seen um, Gangs of New York, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Collins, it's a like Irish looking. Yes, I know who yeah. you're talking about. Awesome, awesome guy. And I went, crap, they're good people in this. Mm -hmm. 28 Days Later is what I know him from. Just, you know, from, and in Bruges. Yeah. Too. Oh, um, yeah, him and Colin Farrell were in Bruges. Uh, Colin Farrell, if you watch Hot Ones, it's a spicy episode. Pretty dang good, by the way. Okay. Look, I'm just calling out, you know, Corridor Crew <laughs> and Hot Ones. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> Yeah, so they they see uh Sean or Dougery Scott, Sean Ambrose, whatever, talking with John C. McCloy, the CEO, mm -hmm. and he's blackmailing them. And that's where everything kicks off heavy of like they're telling him they have the antidote. You mm -hmm. don't have it, you just have your virus. Preston, what is this company doing? Are they making a super crazy virus just to gill? I apparently they 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 profit in diseases. I mean, I, look, I'm not trying to be political and cut this out if you want to, but I mean, did some did some company create COVID? And is this very accurate? I mean, actually, there, there was a lab in China. Mm. I, so I, I sat there and went, "This is stupid. Nothing's you know, this will never happen." Then went, "Yeah, oh, actually, no, very possible." But they definitely get the like. Okay, mm -hmm. if you get the virus, you have 20 hours. You got to be saved in that. And then she That's what it was. Tom Cruise was pretending to be Dugray Scott, and Dugray Scott is pretending to be Tom Cruise at the same time. Because that's how we find out that that's Dugray Scott as Tom Cruise when he's hugging um, Flip Andy it. Newton. Flip it. He's, it cuts uh, to... Uh, Tom Cruise is pretending to be... Uh, I'm looking at my notes, hoping I wrote it down. Um... 
He's pretending to be Dr. Vladimir. They kidnap yeah. the CEO. And Tom Cruise is pretending to be the scientist or the chemical expert and telling the guy, like, you're going to die. You have this virus. So then he tells them everything, which that whole scene, awesome. Yeah. Them throwing him in the car as Lemo, bringing him back home and being like, yeah, you're fine. Get the heck out of here. Yeah. I, that's where I was like, yeah, this is Mission Impossible. This is yeah, dope. Exactly. But um, what was her name? Thandy. Whoever's- I think it's actually pronounced Tandy Newton. Tandy. But there's an H in there, so it doesn't make Slips sense. Slips that but- freaking thing in the wrong park it. She does. Park it? What is a park it? I don't Pocket. Know. Pocket. If she was that good of a thief, there's no way. Yeah. But that's what then gets her, what you were saying, like he gets the Ethan Hunt mask and voice band-aid on his throat. Yeah, because he used to be a spy for IMF as well. So yeah. he's like the anti-Ethan Hunt. Which, again, look, you know, it is a movie, it's fictional, whatever, yeah. but what world would a rogue agent be left to live? Why would you not just exactly. go? Just kill him. Yeah, shoot him. Who cares? They do this the whole movie. But they make so. this big thing of like Tom Cruise doesn't like to just kill anybody. You know, he's he's Ethan Hunt. He's a good guy. Yeah, Ethan Hunt. Money man. But they they figure out that they need to go to this some building somewhere that has the uh, in it. It's the biosite. <laughs> it's it's man, look, I, boy. <clears throat> Preston, it's I am normally like pulling its strings on crap and this stupid movie i've got it man mm-hmm. they go to the biosite headquarters where there there's a lab and then you get the you know money maker mission impossible at this point thing of the we're gonna lower them down on a string yeah they do the they try to yeah. they, they have to beat the timing of the vents closing and him getting in there and then retracting the cable uh, cool scene Mm-hmm. No, first one was so much better. Mm-hmm. Like it was just because they try to do the thing where he splayed out and <laughs> stopped short. You know, sound effects suck on a podcast because I just you know motioned what it was, but everyone's just gonna think I'm insane. Yeah. yeah. But you know that was a funny sequence though. The guards looking out at him while he's hanging down and he's trying to hide in different yeah. places. Yeah. Man, and I was like, I was back into it. I went, yeah, this movie's great. This is cool, man. This works. But then, no, they, you know, end up like the radio sequence in his ear gets broken up. They can't track them because they're turning on these generators, turning them off. Sorry. So he goes to destroy the virus, but he's got to destroy the cultivative. Yeah. All right. I'm reading my notes, right? Cultivative. It's probably not the right word of the virus where like they're building it. But then any source of the virus in those guns, he's got to get rid of, too. I just love the stupid, like, I'm going to discharge two of the three, and then on the third one, I'm yeah. screwed. Right. But You just remembered a whole lot more that I didn't. I am not proud of my life. I'm not <laughs> proud of this. You know, this is not something I wish that I had memory of. Right. To be clear, I hated this movie. Yeah, if, it's terrible. You can't tell. Uh, but yeah, they give that, they, then you get the final or the first like Sean versus Ethan Hunt standoff. Right. Yeah. Which, they, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the action sequences of this. Yeah. They're corny. They're kind of stupid. Yeah. They're cool. They, I mean, like, especially some of the, like that sequence in the lab, Ethan Hunt does so many wrestling moves. John Wood knows what he's doing with, with action. Yeah. And, and I was like, man, I'm back into this. This is dope. Like mm-hmm. weird flying elbows dropping down, weird, sh- you know, God, a, it like, was dope, man. Well, we don't get the bicycle kicks yet, but. Ooh, baby. Man, hey, when you said Mission Impossible 2, the first thing I said was get ready for a bicycle standoff. <laughs> Mint motorcycle, but I think I said bicycle. Um, Tom Cruise blows a hole in the, the side wall of that place, as if I'm remembering correctly. Yep. And then jumps out because Tandy Newton injects herself with the sickness. How stupid. Yeah. Why would like, you do that? Like, no. If- She's like, I guess you need to keep me alive now. I was like, but why? 
I'm going to make sure I, I said something earlier. My wife downstairs just said, yeah, Jake, you suck. Wow. So I said something negative or thanks, but Thandie Newton sucks. Logan, either be on the podcast or don't. I yeah. Don't screw off, Logan. Get out of here. <laughs> um, go get Thandie Newton to give you the chimera. Yeah. Um, uh, how, I mean, like, I don't know, Preston, I guess I get it. Like you're trying to save the situation. So you inject yeah. yourself. But he just leaves her behind. All yeah, all you had to do was destroy that thing. The world's yeah. safe. Yeah, you didn't. And I need guess to you're trying to save it. Ethan because she loves him. But what? Why do you need to inject it? What? I don't. I, that and then you know again right back into like what is wrong with this movie? Yeah, this sick action sequence. Well, they needed not- you know just like with Face Off, they needed to have like a long vehicle chase at the end. Ooh. Oh yeah, and that vehicle chase was just like Face Off, ridiculous There's and way too long. Yes, yes, I thought the movie was going to end. Yeah. Then no, no. Um, so he gets no, he doesn't get her out. They kidnap her, and then they've got the That's rescue right. mission yeah. to get they, her back, and they have to go her. negotiate on that weird island mm-hmm. where um. <sighs> I didn't. I don't trust my notes. Brandon Gilson, uh, the guy, that's the CEO, is going to give them the stock options. Yes, 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 yes. Because yes, he was like, "I'll give you all the money," and then they're like, "No, I won't stop." Like, yeah, we're going to release the virus. Like, hey, you know what? Pretty good, pretty good idea. We're going to release the virus. Plan, yeah, you're going to sell the antidote, which, yeah, it is pretty bonkers. But that's when you get the really dope. It was ridiculous. It was stupid. What a sick like spy entry from Ethan Hunt. Yeah. Him silently killing these people with all that slow-mo. It was stupid. Dag gum, I was into it. Like <laughs> I'm gonna do this weird backflip to karate chop you in the neck with my arm. Like, yeah. What are we watching? And I then that's when you dude. got the pigeons. You didn't yeah, get the I was like, yet. that's a. I texted you. you I text remember me. texting. You said, "There's pigeons? pigeons." Yeah, you get a dove later, and it's like, "The dark night is rising. Yeah. <laughs> He's coming." I was like, "That's a pigeon, not a dove." Thank you very much. Um, but what there are doves at the end? But like, man, the 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 villains' concepts fall apart. They just dumped yeah. the girl off somewhere and she ran away. And I get it, like she'll spread the virus. They want the, they want the virus to spread because they got stock in the company that's about to sell yep. the cure. So I mean like, yeah, you got this intelligent female. She's just gonna go kill herself off a of, Yeah. You know, what are you thinking? And that becomes the whole chase of like uh this was the dopest face swap, which let me go ahead and tell you, these face swaps, just like face off, Tom Cruise is short. The guy that he guy switches like faces six with. Foot. Yeah. Yeah. How and <clears throat> I'm sorry, like, there's no way they changed outfits. Nothing. Right. No. Not so, that quick. I know it's a movie, so I'm not gonna, you know, bogus it up, but no. No way. Yeah. But so rad. Like it is. what a sick change. Like you drag Ethan Hunt in. He's going to kill his brother. He's going to take the handy to just walk out. Like, you legit see him walk out in the background. They don't even make a big deal about it. Yeah. You just see him barely go. I, I love that part. This is, you know, one of the saving moments of the movie. But after that, you get the most incredible motorcycle chase ever. And it's Tom it Cruise is, on the motorcycle. It, it, I think he did everything. Yeah. Which, that's impressive. I mean, like, I, I don't care how bad this movie is. And I'll say it again. Tom Cruise, that it, one of the best actors in the world. Just, but, he's crazy. He's weird. But, oh, my God. Basically, they chase each other to the beach for a little while. They eventually have, it goes forever. And then it's like, it starts, they, they do a game of chicken, basically. <laughs> The that, motorcycles are pointed at each other, and then they just take off at each other. You know, there are some questions uh, while watching this. I text you like, maybe I'm thinking about Mission Impossible 3. That moment hit, and I was like, oh, I'm rectified, if that's the right word. I was pumped. I'm like, oh, I was right. 
this stupid motorcycle chicken thing. Yeah. And it was great. It Where was they just jump off action. and grab each other. So ridiculous. Like, they would have just broken bones. Yeah. And then they tussle for a little bit. And then do the I rem, the behind the scenes of this stunt, Do Gray Scott has a knife that's going for Ethan's eye and it stops right there. Okay, so like I I got and a big touching I don't have a lot of problem with things. I have a problem with like things coming close to my eye. Yeah. And I don't want to see something going next to someone's eyes. So I like I'm not gonna lie, like I shut my eyes, I shrieked, I went away, I couldn't watch it. <laughs> But what a stupid John Woo trope, though. Like, Be- because like, oh, it's so close. What I've learned from stunt guys watching Corridor Crew, as we'll bring oh, up again. Oh, you did the plug this time. Sick. Yeah. Um. When when you have like say like you and me have a knife, you're gonna be pushing it. T- you're gonna be pulling it toward you, and I'm gonna be pulling it away. Yep. So if we slip, that nobody gets hurt. I'm going to tell you, it did not look like that was happening. It's, it wasn't. Behind the scenes no. of this stunt, that was Tom Cruise's eye. They had this like string or rope or chain or something. And Do Gray Scott is like hammering on this thing. And it's it's like Tom, like they're pulling it and they, they measured it so it would just like come close to Tom Cruise's eye. And I'm like, I, I that mean, is the opposite. Because like if that thing slips, it's no more Tom Cruise. I'm going to go ahead and be very uh, evil or bad. Like, Dougry Scott didn't really like him at all. He no. didn't do anything else big, did he? Not really. No, like, that, that was, was his chance. That was the big moment. I think he did like, uh, I think, I, I'm not a Doctor Who fan. I think he did Doctor Who. He was in a Hitman in take, movie. He's in Taken 3. That's right, yeah. Yeah, he's in Taken 3, but I, and he's in the TV, uh, was, and was there, even if he did become Wolverine, I feel like Hugh Jackman would have blown up to his stardom anyway. Yeah, definitely. Like, Hugh Jackman was already on that path. Yeah, you know what? Like, I super nerds really hate on the Hugh Jackman cast because he's taller. You know, uh, not he's not too tall, but like Wolverine, especially this little squatty guy. Yeah, he that that's his big thing is like he's a short guy, and so I, mean, I don't know Hugh Jackman. I don't know. I I don't think Wolverine now without Hugh Jackman, but right. Whatever, but on this uh, episode of the podcast of X Men Reacts, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, crap! I had something else to tell you about. Oh shit! Uh, never mind. I'll tell you later. But anyway, cut, the, cut that out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they find Tandy Newton on a cliff, and they've got her in a helicopter, and because you know he eventually, of course, he beats um, Do Gray Scott. What a also Preston, what a stupid beatdown. Kicks a gun out of the sand. So many I'm kicking. Sorry. So much ki- Yeah, like when he's going to the helicopter when they're I was getting to that. When they're going yeah. to the helicopter and they're picking him up. Do Gray Scott comes back up with a gun or something. I can't remember. And Ethan Hunt kicks a gun out of the sand. Dude, he uh, let me tell you something. Bullshit. Dang straight. The amount of time it had taken that guy to pull the trigger, no way. Yeah. No way. And that's where I really checked out. I yeah. already hated this movie. That happened, and it's like, yeah, I'm watching, uh, you know, a... You're watching an anime at that point. Worse than that, I'm watching a, like, um, Robert Sparks movie. Yeah. It, it, right? That's the that's the sappy guy, right? Nicholas okay. Sparks. Nicholas Sparks. Yeah, I work with Robert Sparks. Sorry, Nicholas <laughs> Sparks. Uh, He's Nicholas from South Sparks. Carolina, by the way. Yeah, I've met him. Really? Met him once. Randomly. Is he related to... I had a conversation to... with him, didn't know it was him. Richard Sparks or whatever? Richard, Robert Sparks, I talked to on conference calls, but Nicholas oh. Sparks, I have met. Okay. and He's a nice guy. Uh, talked to him for a while. Then he told me he writes books and said his name. And I went, no, your books suck. <laughs> and he went, they're not for everyone. No. I understand that. You're not my client. But clientele. they've made me a lot of money. Hey, I got nothing but respect. Flat out. I, I, one of them was I, turned I, I in. Shouldn't, shouldn't was, have said like, your books suck. But he's like, you're not my audience. Exactly. That's, you know, that's bold. I'm on. 
just like this movie, I'm not the audience now. Right. So. Because they as you know, they saved the day, Ethan Hunt is safe, blah, 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 blah. Him and yeah. Tandy Newton retire to a crowded park and she's and, never and seen get, again. Nope, never again. She I think he killed her. Right. He he got married to <laughs> Michelle Monaghan between that and Mission Impossible Three. That's what kills me about movies like this, and like James Bond too. Like I lo- I love Bond movies, and I you know they're these is this is not the same thing as that. But have you seen the new one? Uh, you know what? I didn't. Ooh. I am so okay. I was about to get... spoil it no, really don't, hard. Don't but... don't because I man, that's one of the things I miss. It's a good one. The it's it is a good one. I. Daniel Craig. It is, is a definitive end to Daniel Craig, though. Uh, I well, hey, I, I I knew that, and that's good. He did such a good job. They do a good job of wrapping that up, which is crazy because Tom Cruise does such a good job as Ethan Hunt, but in this mm-hmm. movie, he doesn't. Well, the the next two Mission Impossible movies they're shooting right now are supposed to be the end of this franchise. Uh, I'm willing to bet Tom Cruise will kill himself doing some kind of stunt. I think he really wants to. I think he wants out of Scientology. Mm. And that's the only way out that he feels. You know, please leave this in. Scientology is insane. It is. um, I have no problem saying that. Holy cow. And you know, I don't think Tom Cruise is stupid. He's a smart guy. No, he's a real smart guy. So that's Mission Impossible too. It was not good. Nope. It's like a. I would not uh, recommend it. I'd give it three out of ten. Ooh, I see. I'd give it a four out of ten. Okay, I, I can. I get that. There's some cool stuff. There's mm-hmm. some super cool stuff. That's and that's what kills me. Mm-hmm. There's some of the coolest things still to date in this movie. I'm like, oh, that is so awesome. It's yeah. done so well. So whether it's John Woo or someone else killing it, man, the the concept, the story. I mean, like. My problem is the entire story. It's just flawed. It's terrible. But that's the end of this boozed up podcast. <laughs> Tom Cruise is still handsome, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst closing I've ever given you. In my life. <laughs> I was going to try and mimic him standing on the couch jumping. Yeah. And said it and went, I'm not going to start jumping around. Yeah. So. That's uh, the end of this episode. Um, if you want to send a suggestion, you can send that to second tech movies pod at gmail.com. You can find us on the social medias. Maybe next week might be Dan in real life. If I can get plans firmed down with who I'm doing that with. Fantastic movie, by the way. See what I'm going to get into next week is everyone in my fan group was like, this is the best movie ever. It's so great and wonderful. No, it is definitely not the best. It is and okay. I watched it. They gave it to me for Christmas, and I watched it, and I'm like, I mean, it's good, but I've seen this movie done a lot and better. I, I'll give you my hot take. It's the same movie you've seen a million times, but yeah. everyone loves Steve Carell. Right. That's it. That's yeah. the only reason it's good. Yeah. Steve Carell and Dane Cook. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not good apart from that. If you had this movie, hey, if you had that movie, I know it's not the right podcast. You had that movie without Steve Carell, it'd have been a flop. Yeah. So, but with that, him. we will leave you with possibly Dan in real life next week. Jake will probably definitely be back again if I can't find someone else. Um, so, can you end this uh, with your rendition of the uh, Limp Biscuit Mission Impossible theme, real quick, please? Bow, <laughs> <laughs>